one channel, different shows, everything entertaining. Make a Path presents Let's Talk. Hello deadheads, before we get into this rating slash review, I just want to point out we now have an answer to one of the biggest enigmas in all of zombie lore. Do rotters, walkers, geeks, spiders, roamers, whatever you call them, do zombies shit? Yes they do. And with that new fascinating discovery, let's get right into the rating. I believe this is a very good episode, and from taking a glance on social media, I feel like I must now defend my position that this was a very good episode. Let's talk The Walking Dead, episode 505, Self-Help. You know, I can see a lot of people at first glance dismissing an episode like Self-Help because it has to deal a lot with character development. And not even in-your-face character development, but subtle character development. However, when it's done right, it can be really good. And I think Self-Help is a shining example of powerful moments done in a subtle nature that truly helps repeat viewers to appreciate it more and more each time they watch it. Such as Eugene's development. This episode, probably the title of this episode belonged to Eugene. It screamed Eugene's character development. However, the soul throughout the episode screamed Abraham's character development. So it was just a nice blend. And this is a clear example of how you can take a somewhat of a standalone episode where you don't have all the power players in this episode, but you have Glenn and Maggie. They are older characters that we connect with and we care about, and they are implanted into the newer character's world. This is an episode very much about the newer characters. So it's nice that we have characters we already know and that we're already comfortable with mixed in here. And it's not just them by themselves. And I think that's where this episode really finds its strength. Now Eugene's development started right from the beginning of the episode when they were on the bus and Eugene said he was thinking about Gabriel. The passengers on the bus probably thought he was thinking about Gabriel and what he's done. Eugene is thinking about Gabriel in the sense of forgiveness. He did these bad things and the group didn't throw him out. Gabriel is weak in the group keeps him. Gabriel can't protect himself and the group keeps him. These are things he's probably thinking about in his head. Why are they keeping him? What is different with this group? And then later in this episode, while he was in the self-help section of the bookstore watching Rosita and Abraham get it on, Tara catches him. And Eugene confesses to Tara, another person who is riddled with guilt. Don't forget, Eugene is a human. He's not just lying and watching people die because of his lies and he's thinking, oh, oh well, as long as I get to live, it's eating him up inside. So he confesses and he even admits, I don't know why I'm telling you this. He admits that to Tara. But he really does know why, because she harbors guilt as well. And then Tara also goes on to enlighten Eugene on the truth that he is in this group. And this group, as unconditional as a set of rules as you can get, as long as you're a good person, if this group finds you, they'll take you in. You know what I mean? You don't have to be the one to cure this thing. We see Eugene is helpful. He's intelligent. He can start fires. He is very useful. He doesn't have to cure it, though, for them to care about him, for them to help him. And then also in the self-help section of this bookstore, we get like a, a bigger meaning for the title of this episode being self-help. And that is the underlining theme that Eugene has to help himself. He has to exercise self-help. And throughout this episode, even in situations where he has helped others, like the fire truck scene, because don't forget, helping others to survive, who help you to survive, is essentially self-help. It's helping yourself. Awkwardly enough, Eugene even kind of uh, clarifies this for Tara. When she thanks him for helping her back when the bus flipped, he stabbed the walker, kind of like an assisted kill, but he stabbed the walker. She says, you saved my life. And he says, well, no, I didn't really because essentially in Eugene's mind, it broke down to it's helping himself because the actions reverberate with the same reaction that he's essentially being helped. You know what I mean? Now back to the subtleness and the meaning, I believe the biggest one is when Maggie went and had the conversation with Eugene. Now the best part, the, what I got from, and I could be totally wrong, but essentially Maggie is telling Eugene he's a liar without even her knowing she's telling him he's a damn liar. She's giving him this story of Samson. To break it down, Maggie is giving Eugene a speech about one thing, but when he's hearing it, he's processing it to the reality that's inside his head because only he knows right now that he is a liar. So he is taking her story, processing it into reality, and it's basically adding more on to him being a liar. It's adding on to his guilt. 
Maggie was talking about Samson and the riddle, and essentially the answer is inside your head. Now look at Eugene, for example. He's inside of his head. He's the only one who knows the lie. So a confession could be the answer to all this. I mean, that was what I was pulling from it. I could be reading too deep into it, but his confession would be the thing to end this madness. And then we catch the wind, bringing in the smell of a massive herd of walkers. And this will eventually lead to Eugene, the coward, having one of the bravest moments he could possibly have. Because to a coward, telling the truth and dealing with the, the consequences of your actions, of your lie, dealing with that, that is the bravest thing he can do as a coward. In result, the consequences, we have Abraham, in a nutshell, he crushes Eugene's face. Demolishes him. Now, Eugene hits the fire truck, and I absolutely love this. When people are knocked out, I hate movies where they brace themselves. His legs should have buckled a little bit more, I felt. Anyway, now we have Eugene on the ground, and Abraham isn't quite done yet. Rosita steps in. She has her hand on her pistol, which is still holstered. She looks terrified, and reality sets back in. That anger kind of washes over. He isn't so much blindfolded by his rage anymore, and he's looking again at the symbolism that's been there throughout this entire episode, the cut on his hand. Hand. The cut on his hand that ties into his flashback. Now his flashback, let's run through what the whole flashback was and let's clarify some things because I noticed they showed his flashback in a way that only comic book fans would understand every little detail. The flashback begins with him beating a man to death with a can. It appears that the wound that we see throughout the episode, the wound that literally is a wound that keeps opening on his hand, but figuratively we all know that's the wound of his past that keeps opening throughout this episode. Abraham stands up, crushes the guy's throat, and it's a reveal that it is a few men that he has beaten to death. So it's a few people. It's not just one. It's not just two. There was a few bodies there. Now what they leave out, which I love that they leave it out. There might not have been any real nice way that wouldn't be spoon feeding us the information. And it gives people something to talk about and it draws people into the comic. Like, oh, wait a minute. I want to know more about that scene. Now, the people that he was traveling with were like neighbors, uh, maybe a couple like neighborhood friends. You know what I mean? But these were the last people in the world you would imagine that would hurt you or your family. And he went out on a supply run and his neighbors and some people closer to him that he was banding together a little group of survivors they raped his wife and his daughter. Now he went out on a supply run and he found out when he came back he lost his shit. He was blinded by rage and he just ripped these people apart with his bare hands. When he's done he goes over we see that his family is crouching hiding in terror of what's going on. Now right around here we should assume that there's a lot more blood guts gore and terror that Abraham did in his blind rage that they're not showing us. Pretty much done off screen. It got pretty bad. Now Abraham is waking up. His family left. Abraham goes to look for his family. They didn't make it far. We see the remains of them after they were eaten by walkers. Now he goes to end it all. He hears Eugene calling for help. He just gets up, probably instinctively, vents some of his rage. The way he kills these walkers, it reflects the way we've seen him killing these walkers since we met him. After Abraham vents immediately, he goes back to finishing killing himself. Eugene spots it. He looks down. He sees the bodies. Puts it together like that and then he lies and the mission is born now keep in mind this lie although it did destroy a lot of lives it could possibly be the beginning of an easy forgiveness maybe a little rough forgiveness but in the end it could bring Abraham closer to forgiving Eugene because Abraham and Eugene both know if Eugene did not lie Abraham is going to kill himself there was nothing that Eugene could say that was going to stop him except for the mission so Abraham being alive right now is only because of Eugene's lie. Let's not forget this. So in an ironic sense, right now, Abraham owes him his life. Messed up, but that's just true. <laughs> Whatever life this could be, you know? Now, I think the most powerful thing with the flashback scenes is we see Abraham's motivation. If it wasn't for the mission, Abraham would have no reason to live. And now that the mission has been revealed to be a lie, he walks away from the group and he falls to his knees, which brings him right back to where he started from. On his knees in front of his dead family with no reason to live. Also, throughout the mission itself, he kept hitting detour after detour. And finally, when they made it to that massive herd which by the 
away. I love that. I absolutely love that. For the first time in such a long time, I actually got a sense that the walkers were threatening them. And I want to see more of that. I loved it. They, they didn't even get close. And it was still a threatening thought. But anyway, they're looking at this herd and Abraham can't take it anymore. Starts talking to himself and he loses his shit. And he goes and grips Eugene up no matter what they're going through this herd. Make it through the herd or die trying. It is a reckless decision, but Abraham would rather die than go through one more detour. So with Eugene watching the group at each other's throats and knowing that if they do decide to take this journey, they are all going to die. Eugene's lie is finally going to catch up and not only kill everyone he just met, but himself included. Eugene might just die going through that herd. Eugene confesses his secret and Abraham is struck with this huge irony that the mission itself was one big detour, ultimately bringing him right back down to his knees where he has lost everything. Now, in showing that, they needed to show us little clips of flashbacks, and I, th I thought the pacing was great, and the placement of the flashbacks were, were wonderful. They were terrific. And with the pacing, even with all the serious content, we got a lot of humor. I really enjoyed the humor in this episode. Glenn opened the episode with humor and kind of closed it with humor as well. He opened it up with on the bus talking about Eugene's hair, but he also closed the episode at the end when Eugene says he just knows things, and Glenn gives him that, you gotta be shitting me look. That your best excuse. You also have Abe and Glenn when they're talking. Abraham says he's going to get some piece of ass pretty much and Glenn is like that's just too much information. You have Tara who catches Eugene peeking in the self-help section and when he walks away she decides to take a little peek herself. Also Maggie has some little uh, snippets of funny dialogue in there breaking up the tension. So yeah a few of the characters had that little bit of humor that just broke up the tension that was throughout the episode and the credit truly goes back to the writing because that is great to have so much seriousness and then a little relaxed humor. Some seriousness, relaxed humor. You know what I mean? One moment that was a major flaw to me was Maggie. I, I finally broke down. I made excuse after excuse why Maggie had reason after reason not to mention Beth. Maybe she's burying it, but when Maggie was in the bookstore going to bed with Glenn and they were talking about feeling bad that they left the group behind to deal with whatever they had to deal with, this should have been the perfect time to bring up Beth. Some Somewhere in this dialogue, they should have had Glenn say, Dude, don't worry, hon. Don't worry. You remember, Daryl said he's on it. Daryl told us he will track it. He knows what to do better than we know what to do. This is in his hands. There's nothing we can do. We don't even know where to begin to look. Leave it up to him. I firmly believe they needed that dialogue. It would have gave us a reason why Maggie has never brought up Beth before, and it would have made it clearer that Maggie does in fact worry about Beth. When she's talking in a bookstore, it was like Beth really does not exist anymore. Beth is dead. And I am now just completely curious to see how they're going to rectify that in the coming episodes. Especially when she meets Beth. Or when she meets Beth and Beth is dead. What are they going to do? Is she going to be like, oh my poor sister, I've been looking for... I don't know. You know? That was one thing I thought was a huge fail. I have no more excuses for Maggie. And another major fail was the variation of my uh, soapbox syndrome. And yes, this variation included a commercial break. When Eugene revealed he is not a scientist, and then they go to a commercial break, that was a huge fail for me. You brought so much tension into the scene, and then you give us a commercial break, and within two seconds, we're talking about erectile dysfunction. I know a lot of you guys are scratching your head thinking, wait a minute, did you just count a commercial break as a fail, <laughs> you know, within an episode we need commercials yeah we absolutely need commercials it's how the TV shows get paid it's how TV shows are on the air commercials are a necessity you need them without commercials you wouldn't have The Walking Dead I understand that it's just the placement was so bad it ruined the scene for me when we came back into the scene it, by the time I was getting back into the scene Abraham was punching Eugene in the face and the moment was just lost for me so that's a fail in my book all right deadheads that pretty much covers it from here. Keep in mind, I do have the prediction video for episode 506. That is going to be a Daryl and Carol bottle episode. I will have that prediction episode coming as soon as I can. 
please click here for that or you can find the link in the description below. Also, don't forget you can like Make a Path Presents on Facebook and you can follow Make a Path Presents and Ronnie Hayes on Instagram and Twitter. You can find all those links down below. And again, I just want to give the Deadhead community a huge shout out. I friggin' love you guys. My sharing statistics just keep going up and up. They're always positive, never negative. And keep in mind, guys, it helps this channel out a lot, if anything. The more you share is the more I care. And I really mean that. Because it's like a, a burst of motivation when you go check your stats and you see that a lot of people are putting the word out there or they're sharing the video, liking the video, commenting for the Q&As, being interactive. I mean, it, it is great. I, it's wonderful. I couldn't ask for a better community to be involved with. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for supporting this channel and this segment of Let's Talk on this channel. And I would love to hear what you thought about this episode down in the comments below. All right, guys, get typing. I'm done talking talking it's your turn subscribe now